Nutrition Depot, your fitness fuel. Okay, uh, good evening, good afternoon, or good morning, depending on where or what time you're listening to us. And welcome to episode two of the Nutrition Depot podcast. Joining me once again is Coach Pau and Coach Ren of All Out Fitness and Centro Fortis CrossFit. Uh, my name is Coach Job as well, in case you didn't know that. And in episode two, we'll be talking about the our one of our favorite topics, really. <laughs> it's the misconceptions and maybe frequently asked questions when it comes to crossing. And I guess I'll just kind of let's just get the ball rolling right away. I'll start with one of the most common misconceptions about CrossFit is that oh, CrossFit is too intense. Like, well, you know, part of the definition even if is high intensity, right? Yeah. And a lot of people get deterred and they don't do CrossFit because they hear the word intensity and the, the concept of intensity and they see it in the videos. And I just want to start off by saying that whatever you see on videos, typically when you see marketing, especially from the previous episode, Coach Pao, you mentioned about what you saw on ESPN, but that's the sport aspect. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at the Olympic Games level of of what we actually do. So you're looking at people who devote themselves to being a certain way, to being able to compete a certain way. But there is an entry level to it. Yes. And I feel like that is something that people need to understand, that the misconception about intensity is you will do what you see on TV, but those are paid athletes. They have yes. companies that sponsor them all year round to be able to compete and achieve a certain level. In a micro level, in a gym level, the intensity is important is mm -hmm. because we need to understand that for our bodies to function better, for our heart rate and our breathing rate to be better, intensity is important. At least with our methodology, we highly encourage an increase in heart rate and breathing rate, our VO2 maxes as yeah. we'd like to call it, so that when we increase these, to kind of simplify it, we're improving the body's scar tissue to be able to do things better. And when our heart rate and our breathing rate goes back down, our resting heart rates and resting breathing rates are improved. Yes. Yeah. So now you're like, but why do I have it to do? Why do I have to do it intense? The concept of intensity now, as we'd like to communicate with our members, is that it is actually relative. Mm -hmm. Relative. So, for example, I've been doing this for three years and then a person has been doing it for three days. And the workout is, let's say, 50 air squats. So let's keep it simple. Because I've been doing this for three years, I can do the 50 air squats in, let's say, 30 seconds. Yeah. So that's relative to my exposure to the methodology. Whereas the person who's been doing this for three days should not be doing it in 30 yeah. seconds yeah. also. Because chances are they're still learning the proper air squat. Yeah. Their bodies and their muscles have not yet adapted to the movement. So what is the point of you doing 30 seconds just to mimic what I'm doing? Yeah. So that's what we mean about relativity. So intensity is one of the first things that we like to remove when people do CrossFit because intensity is relative to the person that is doing it. You don't have to go at the same speed, level, same weights as the person next to you because they're doing it for a different reason. They could be an athlete. They could be doing this for a long time. They could be doing this new. And you just have to go at your own pace, yep. really. Um, and I've found that communicating that to people who walk through our gyms has mm -hmm. really helped a lot so that they manage their space, their energies yes. when they work out. Um, and that's gone a long way, too. Yeah. yeah. And to add on to that, Coach, no, the, the word um, scaling. Yeah. Because most of the time, they do what what we see, you know, for example, you saw ring muscle ups right? mm. during ESPN when you watch the CrossFit Games. People are not usually informed that, you know, in, in CrossFit gyms, we scale down movements. Yeah. So we go teach them first how to hold or how to do ring rows. Their progressions. Yes, yeah. the progressions. So I guess it'll be helpful for CrossFit gyms here in the Philippines to highlight the yeah. fact that we yeah. can scale down movements based on the experience and the fitness capacity of the person. Yeah, yeah. Great. Coach Ren, would you like to talk about another Second. misconception? Oh, I love yeah. this. <laughs> <laughs> when I ask people to or friends to join me in workout or do CrossFit, normally they tell me, ayoko, lalaki ako. Yeah. Or ayoko, mag-build ako ng malaking muscle. Yeah. So it's, it's well... Especially if you see mga Olympic weightlifters, ba, and CrossFit, uh, CrossFit Games athletes, you'd see them talaga really huge. But I guess it's, it, it depends on 
what your goal is. Yes, yes. So if it's really for lifestyle and you just attend classes, you don't really have to lift super, super heavy weights. Yeah. Second, um, for me, uh, uh, nutrition really plays a huge role. Yes, yes. So we have to eat and not overdo it. I mean, we, we have to make sure that what we eat fuels our body for our trainings or yes. for our workouts. So normally, when they tell me, ayoko pang maana lang yan, baka lumaki ako or baka magmukha akong lalaki. Yeah. And I always show them, mukha na ba akong lalaki? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Di pa naman, no, diba? No, Gandayan. yeah, diba? It's, it's also, diba, Coach Job mentioned yeah. about how many years of experience of training you've been doing it, diba? Yeah. So it's, it's also important. But really, I mean, hindi naman, Hindi yeah. lahat ng mabigat magbuhat, lumalaki. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it, it depends on what you eat, your um, supplements, your recovery. And I feel like I there's know, there's a lot to do with body positivity yeah. also. Well, yeah. Like, through, also, what you can years, do. Yeah, yeah, through the years, parang, I've, I've, I remember noticing that I've pivoted my answers to, yeah, exactly what you said. Yeah. Na it depends what you're trying to do, what your goals are. Honestly, if you give this, if you give us a chance, especially how we can modify your nutrition, you'll find na hindi ka lalaki. But at the same time, I don't want to negate the idea na lalaki ka. Because yeah. for me, I believe na there's a lot of body positivity yeah. in encouraging a person to have more muscle. Because yes. yeah. let's be honest, the one thing that all of us have is time and aging. Yeah. Yes. And as we age, if we do not have muscles as we get older, then we have less of a base to prevent you know, mm. aging difficulties. Like yes, on women, yes. osteoporosis. For men, losing muscle quickly as we, we, age, we get yes. older. Right? So for me, yung, yung concept of like, lalaki ako, I've pivoted to this idea of like, I'll start with a very blunt message and saying, eh, ano ngayon? Right. Parang, so what? And then I'll follow it up with the idea of like, you have to see the beauty and importance of actually getting bigger. Yes. Bigger having meaning having more, more muscle. Because yes. yes. if you're bigger and it's because you're getting, you know, you're gaining <laughs> fat, then that's yes. not yeah. our problem. It's yes. probably because you're that's eating not. too much. Yes. Diba? You know, man, yun eh. So mm. there's a lot of body positivity on top of like knowing what your body can do yeah. and just using ourselves as examples also. Diba? And I think yes. that's also a beautiful thing about CrossFit and what we encourage you know, our six attributes to effective coaching. One mm. of them is presence and attitude. Yes. And it's just being able to demonstrate that, yo, look at us. These yes. are your coaches. We do the programming and this is the byproduct. Yes. We are basically the parang advertisements mm. yeah. then. You have to walk parang, the talk. Naman si coach yeah. Ren, have to walk the talk. Well, to I guess the then to add up to that, the, um, we as a coach are our own example to our yeah. athletes. Yeah. So if medyo like we're being a toxic coach, the athletes will be toxic then. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. us being more positive, then yeah. being a good example, joining competitions, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, motivating our athletes, mm -hmm. that this is a lifestyle that yeah. they can, yeah. that is sustainable. Yeah. Yeah. Something that, because if you're doing high intensity, lage, yeah. tends to burn out a lot of people. Yeah. 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 Said stress in life, lots of factors. Mm, true, true. So for us, parang yun nga. Um, going back to walk hindi di ka lalak, lalaki ba ako it, well number one thing is the nutrition yeah, so that's important. really plays a big factor on that rather than like um, you set an example to yourself yeah. na magpakita ka lang ng video of you yeah. lifting yeah, yeah, na yeah. I'm lifting this beyond kinds of weight, body weight beyond oh, your body yeah. weight oh. then yun pa lang eh parang then you look at your body di ba yeah. Even me, I'm using your example yeah, to, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to, <Yeah. laughs> to explain to other people. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah. How about you, Coach Pao? Uh, what is another misconception or like a frequently asked question um, that you get? Well, the top of my head right now is I'm too old mm -hmm. to do this. Mm -hmm. CrossFit mm -hmm. or because uh, they tend to, yun nga, to see this very intense mm -hmm. bubot ng mabigat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, for me, it's about educating, yeah, educating them that you, you won't start do mm -hmm. lifting this heavy weight. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we start with an assessment. Mm -hmm. Like, we show that what you said, relativity and scalability. Mm -hmm. yeah. na before you do like a back squat, mm -hmm. siyempre you do an air squat. Before yeah. you do a full air squat, 
you do like um, a scale down of an air squat just sitting down to a mm. med ball or mm. anything just to mimic the movement mm. to what they could do mm. so basically it depends on it's not about the age mm. yeah. so it depends on your fitness level because mm. if you're just saying that as an excuse na to not move mm. then you're, you're basically like um, losing the B- your bone mass density parang mm. it's yeah. more prone to osteoporosis yes. so lifting weights uh, basically there's a study naman na proven na if you lift weights or lift something um, yeah. your your bone mass density gets mm. um, um, he- higher healthier yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah it's basically about um, scalability and Educating and assessment, yeah. Mm, yeah. So there's that saying on uh, with with Coach Greg Glassman, or at least in the CrossFit forums, where they talk about like the difference in the requirement or the necessity of an Olympic weightlifter to a 70 year old yes. person working out and doing the same movement. It varies in degree, degree, degree not but degree. not in the necessity. Yes. So basically, what they wanted to emphasize there is that an athlete competing in the sport of weightlifting, they, they will really need to train the heavy yes. lifts. But does that mean that the 70-year-old should not be doing weightlifting? Mm-hmm. It's quite the opposite, actually. Yep. Compound movements are very important as we age so that we prevent mm-hmm. you know, deterioration in Deterior- our joints. Yes. Yes. Number one cause for a an aging person to get frozen shoulder yeah. is lack of range of motion. So mm-hmm. it's the lack of encouragement of putting your hands over your head or just mm-hmm. doing a simple pass through with a wooden stick or a PVC pipe, yeah. a weightless object, right? And injury, as our definition is in CrossFit. So in, in case for those our listeners who may have heard about injury or anything, but it hasn't even been defined, CrossFit's injury definition is actually enforcing force outside of a given person's range of motion strength. So for example, my range of motion right now is let's say 90 degrees. I can't really demonstrate that, but but let's say 90 (laughs) degrees. And every day I go through 90 degrees of range of motion. And this is what I'm doing. I do weights here. I do curls here. I do throws here. I do whatever. And then one day there's my lumilipad na ipis. (laughs) <laughs> so, parang, Uy, na and I go 120 degrees yes. outside of my shoulder. And in full force, I smack that flying cockroach. Bam! Injury. Yes. That's what happens. Mm-hmm. And that's basically what we're trying to say with the whole difference in intensity, but not in terms of the, the necessity. Mm-hmm. A 70-year-old or basically an, an older person needs to be exposed to all the the ranges of motions and do need to be strengthened there as well. Mm. We're not saying that older people need to lift the same weights as younger people. We're just saying they need to do the same things. That's yeah. why compound movements are important. So kind of roll bo- snowballing on this as well as to like what I'm talking about. The misconception of CrossFit is not for everyone. It is something that we we often hear. Now, on a psychological perspective, the whole concept of like, you know what, okra is not for me. And I'm like, yeah, I agree with you. Okra, okra's <laughs> not for me. Parang, so if it's a preference thing, then yeah. sure, I will respect that. Yeah. But if we're talking about this statement that they're saying like CrossFit isn't for everyone, not everyone can do it, wrong. Mm. This is a big misconception that we really like to tackle. We have CrossFit kids. We have CrossFit yes, teens. Geez. We have CrossFit adults. in the joke. Masters. Masters. Um, we even have adaptive CrossFit where yes. we have yes. movements that are encouraged for people who either have neurological problems, yes. nervous problems, um, certain ligaments that are missing, mm-hmm. like whether due to accident or bo- inborn. And that is the beauty of the methodology that we yeah. have. And now I'm not trying to disregard other methodologies, but let's be honest, like, Will you make a person who has no legs go running? But with CrossFit, they can. Not yeah. running per se, but they can do the methodology. Yeah. Why? Because our program encourages scalability. Mm. Our mm-hmm. program recommends modifications. Yeah. You've got people doing push-ups on their heads, handstand push-ups. Um, me as a first person doing this, I can't do that. Yeah, we know. So you're going to do regular push-ups. I also can't do that. No problem. We're going to have you do it on a box. Yes. I also can't do that. I didn't work out. But basically, yeah, the beauty of it that. is 
Because it's for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. We just need people to understand that all movements can either be scaled, modified to a certain extent. Workouts can be modified mm. so that it meets the level of, of, of fitness that any person has. And people need to see that because you can do it in your own home too. Like yeah. let's say you have 15 minutes, you have a, you have a busy day, your your child, yeah. your coach Ren, you're the only parent here. Um, my dog can do burpees, but you know, that's about <laughs> it. Um, your child can work out with you. And yes. there's so much yeah. beauty in in being able to share that experience with yeah. someone and still be able to call it CrossFit and like just erase that concept of how the Filipinos look at it na parang, ah, and then, cool to kayo, umiinom kayo ng dugo eh, di ba? Parang ganun yung, ganun yung idealisms nila, di ba? Yeah. Coach Ren, do you have any well, other... To add on to that, yeah, Coach Rubno, during the pandemic, we also saw that we can substitute, like, di ba, the equipments with what we have at home. Yeah. Di ba? Like, bef- like, some, I saw mga videos during the pandemic, they would use gallons of water yeah. to do farmer's carry yeah. or to do, like, cleans. Yeah. Or using, goblet squats. Yes, goblet, yeah. goblet squats. With their kids and their dogs. Yes, yeah. 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 I think yeah. that's a, again, you're right, Kushob, no? Yeah. It's, it's, that, I guess that's the beauty of CrossFit that you're not um, limited to mm-hmm. what you, ju- what you can just see. Yeah. Elite athletes doing. Yeah. But you can always, it's, it's, again, it's for mm-hmm. everyone and you're never too young, too mm-hmm. old and, yep. yeah. yeah but you'll always yeah. be capable of doing it. Maybe just, you know, a different kind of intensity lang for yeah. every athlete. Yeah. Mm. Well, I guess then um, we tend to be more creative then on what yeah. we do. So mm. um, adding up to that, uh, you know, um, it's, I like what you said, Coach Job, that it's, it's not for everyone in the matter of, you know, yung preference, mm-hmm. siguro. Pero the thing is, it can be done by everyone. Yeah. So... It's a matter of how you do it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, basically you can be creative, just yeah. lifting like the gallon of water. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, everyday yeah. life. What yeah. we experience yung pandemic, wala tayong equipment locked yeah. in our house. Yeah. Diba? Table. Completo, <laughs> completo gamit ko eh. so, <laughs> Since we touched on that, another misconception. Pang mayaman lang yung CrossFit. So exactly, uh, um, it's oh, beautiful yeah. that you just said that because yeah. I was about to say, <laughs> na parang, would you, if you don't mind, uh, parang I give you another uh, FAQ. Is like, I feel like a lot of people keep saying that oh, CrossFit is so expensive. Yes. So yeah. Coach Ren, feel, can you just kind of talk us through like, what do you think is the misconception there, and like, why do they not see the value of what we offer? Because first, um, the membership rate. Well, it varies from gym to from one gym to another, but yeah, it's if you look at it, I mean, you'd really have to have a job yeah. to be able to pay for your yeah. um, membership. Yeah. Second, they'd see CrossFitters, especially in the Philippines, no, we'd normally have a lot of gears. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So we have this huge bag filled yeah. with gears like our knee pads, our knee support, our wrist support. Lahat na yata yeah. ng support meron tayo. Yeah. So n- common misconception talaga is that Oh, you need you need enough money yeah. to be able to support your CrossFit lifestyle. Yeah. But it's not the case. I mean, we saw that during the pandemic, people most most uh, most of our athletes, about they didn't have access to equipments, yeah. to yeah. weights, so they were able to do the workouts by substituting the equipments with other things yeah. that they have at home like yeah. they they didn't even have the pipe so they'd use the broomstick yeah diba? so i i think it's it's really about being creative with how we we get to make them do the workouts and second um well yeah actually sa totoo lang coach but mas mura sa pilipinas mm. mura pa ang crossfit mura i mean pa. you go yeah. Yeah. Diba? abroad very expensive yeah. talaga. Mm. Yeah. And I feel like people um, don't realize the value of what they're paying for. Yes. Kasi diba, yung idea na parang, oh, it, ang, ang mahal ng monthly expend, uh, mahal ng monthly membership, membership niyo, But yeah. they don't realize that it comes with a coach. Yes. Mm. That each, it's a group class yeah. setting. Yeah. That it is a guided class and that there, our coaches undergo through training and it's a specialized programming. Yes. Diba? Mm-hmm. So as a box owner, Coach Pao, as a box owner, what do you feel is the undermined situation when people say like, ah, mahal naman ng membership ninyo? Well, yun nga, as what you said, it's a matter of how you show them the value mm. of what 
you're doing. Mm-hmm. So it's a challenge um, that parang syempre when you go to a gym, usually, lalo na here in the Philippines, like there's a gym like 400 pesos a month. Mm-hmm. May a gym na 1,000 a month. Mm-hmm. Us like 4 or 5k a month yeah. or more. Mm-hmm. So, well, for us, it's a matter of showing to them what they can get mm-hmm. in the gym. It's not just a workout. Mm-hmm. You're getting the community. You're getting all of these wonderful things that's happening inside the box. Mm-hmm. And, well, for our, our, in our own experience in, in my gym, in All Out, we have like one or two that's just minimum wage earners. Mm-hmm. But, but they're going to our gym because they saw the value. Mm-hmm. So they, they, um, they're having fun. Um, alam nila na they're gonna be healthy. Mm. So, ano ba mas prioritize mo? Like, mm. getting sick is more expensive. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah, true. Like, so, chronic diseases are worse. Yeah. 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 You have to spend more if you yeah. get sick. So, mm. coach the value of our coaches. Yeah. I mean, our coaches continue to hone their crafts. Yeah. I mean, they continue to learn. Yeah. yeah. It's a, ba, us. We, we always strive to make sure that we learn something new so that we can teach something new. And yep. I guess yun din yung isa sa mga value that you get when you um, enroll in a CrossFit gym. Yeah, yeah. You get really good coaches. Yeah. So they train hard for that. And their experience of coaching every day. Yeah. Mm. Big setting, the ba? Small group or big group. Yeah. I guess one of ano nga, my, my unforgettable experience in coaching is that bago lang ako nito, I, I, I interned in Primal Ape. So mm. I was so shocked because I had like 20 plus people in the class mm-hmm. and yeah. talagang feeling ko pagkalabas ko na parang gumaling ata akong coach <laughs> yeah well <laughs> Cause, diba, you yeah. have to supervise yeah. and it's it's the science what what they teach us in L1 or L2 how do you spot flaws yeah. how do you supervise about this one line and how do you set up the class so that it'll yeah. be easier for you yeah. i guess yeah. we have to really uh, shout out to all our crossfit coaches yeah. you know, talagang that's the value yeah. One of the most important things that's that basically people the see. main thing that you're really paying for. Because, yes. like, programming, we can say that you're paying for it. Yeah. But chances are people don't understand what your programming is for. Yeah. Right? yeah. We can say equipment. But to the new person, so be natin tenure nila, one day, three days, three weeks, three months, mm. di naman nila alam may big sabi ng rogue. Eh. Like, oh, all rogue gym yeah. kami, di ba? Parang all, all out gym kami, di ba? Oh. Parang, they, <laughs> they don't know that. They don't yeah. know that. They, yeah. they don't understand the value of, yeah. like, oh, fully customized yung gamit namin, yeah. ganito rubber flooring namin. They don't yeah. know that. But the thing that they will see and the thing that they will experience is the quality of coaching right off the bat or the quality of the experience of your gym. Yeah. Diba? Parang yeah. From point of entry, are you greeted by the admin? Are you greeted yes. by the members? And I feel like that's also another thing that is that they're actually paying for. It's basically like free Tinder or Bumble. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But, but I know, I do know a lot of people have met their partners at the gym. Oh, diba? yeah. Because yeah. oh, you're literally buying in into a community. Yeah. Diba? Parang yung binabayaran mo on a monthly, you're not going there to work out by yeah. yourself. You're literally joining classes because it's a group class program mm. and now you're being exposed to people of all ages. Yes. Sana ka-age mo and sana ka-gender na you're attracted to yes. and you'll never know that you might meet the, the person that you're gonna be with. You'll you marry yeah. or yeah. you're going to be linked to someone. Diba? Na parang yes. oh, nasa video ka nila, weightlifting <laughs> video. Tapos may magme-message sa'yo na friend mo parang, uy, sino yung nasa likod mo? Cute. <laughs> Siya, di ba? Parang, alam mo, mga ganun. Common so, yun. Yeah, it's common. Yeah. And, yeah. and there's nothing wrong with that. But it's the whole concept of like letting people, you know, stretch their arms a little bit. And that's another value that people don't see or that they don't feel until they've actually been there. Na yeah. parang, that's why yung, yung misconception na parang, ah, parang kayong kulto. It's like, all you do is talk about CrossFit and then mm. meron kayong mga CrossFit barkada and CrossFit pre- friends mm. pa, di ba? But another thing that I actually wanted to talk about in terms of like FAQ, FAQs and misconceptions is we get this a lot as, as box owners, right? When you're trying to brief someone and like on-ramp someone, they go like, oh, uh, hindi muna because I have to prepare. Mm. I have oh, to be yeah. ready yeah. for CrossFit. So let me prepare myself, but I'll do something first yeah. before I start joining your classes. So how do you guys feel about that? You'll never that, be that ready FAQ? for CrossFit. Yeah. I mean, until now. I mean, diba? we go to the gym and mm. then we don't know, we don't even know what the workout's gonna be. Yeah. So you'll never be prepared. I mean, mm. you just really have to start. 
yeah. you just have to show up every day. Yeah. I guess it's um yeah, you have very common and good thing you brought that yeah. that push up. So parang maybe you can compare it to having a child. Mm. <laughs> you don't know when you will be mm. ready yeah. to have or a marriage. child. Or marriage. Yeah. <laughs> parang ano, yeah. personal to. <laughs> yeah, damn man. So anyways, um um parang we have a lot of members with zero fitness level. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Na um obese well just as long as they can handle like uh they're cleared for medical and stuff yeah, yeah so yeah. we have these sorts of members na no fitness level yun nga then we have these members na para elite athletes from their specific sport yeah who are so, harder to coach yeah, yeah. Yes. who are harder to coach yes. yeah. which is very challenging yeah. one of the challenge of the coaches yeah. it's easier to tell to push someone to go faster it's harder to teach someone to, to go slower. Slow. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that's right. It's a matter of young elite athlete, how for them to rest. Yeah. yeah. And to understand <laughs> na with the speed that you're going, you're not making the most out yeah. of the workout. Yeah. yeah. So, yun nga. Tapos, how do you approach them? Well, for me, um, we usually approach them that, um, well, we get to know them more muna. Mm. Kasi it's hard to say them, ay, hard sell na kailangan mong Mag crossfit kasi geto ganyan. Mm. Yeah. So usually we put our shoes into their shoes first, yeah. Yeah. then learn to understand them as coaches. Like coming from a like a PT setup, usually mas madali kasi PT one on one. Instead of like yun yun na the bangit mo Prime Life. I also taught yeah. there, which is yun yun twenty per class. Yeah. How you will talk to them? Parang like a minute. Yeah. To basically talk to everyone at least yeah. kai papano. It's a very challenging task. Yeah. 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 So yeah, to add on to that, it's you know how we how we go to their shoes yeah. and mm. like to really um feel them. Mm. I feel yeah. like we've gone a long way also when it comes to that. So like kinda like adding on to episode one too is that Way back when, when we started, it was just like, okay, hop into the class right away. Yeah. Meron, meron yeah. foundation sometime then. There was like a trial class where most people had the same trend of like doing the same thing over and over. But now we've got different gyms. And that's the beauty about CrossFit, mm-hmm. right? So CrossFit ha- holds no autonomy over what you do. Like yeah. it, it, you, you pay for the affiliation fee. Now you can run it any way you wish. Yes. And like every facility can literally do what they want when it comes to like onboarding, foundations, fundamentals. So everybody has their approach. And the beauty about it is everyone is constantly tackling this question of like, I am doing deep already. I misconception. Yeah. I have to be ready for CrossFit, right? But which kind of also adds on to like another maybe final thing that I want to talk about um, when it comes to FAQs or misconceptions is that, oh, I don't have time for that. Mm-hmm. I don't have time for that. Like, it seems like it takes up so much of my time. Na parang, oh, one hour? Or like, oh, ganito, ganyan. How do you guys feel about it when people say, na, oh, my classes kayo. I have to make time for it. Like, no, I don't have time for CrossFit. Oh, you should. <laughs> <laughs> you should. I mean, that's an hour of your day. Yeah. How many hours do we have? Like, we have 24 hours. Well, of course, we sleep, the right? Yeah. And then we go to work. Oh, we sleep? No, I don't sleep. Sometimes <laughs> I don't also. No. But, right? It's an hour a day. Yeah. I mean, what's an hour a day if you'll get sick and you'll have to spend, like, days in the hospital? Yeah. Right? Or what's an hour a day if, right? All you do is work and then when you get home, you're just so stressed, burnt out. So, right? We... Right now, especially right now, we're, we may an issue about mental health. Mm, so mm. it's an hour a day that yeah. we give in a CrossFit gym to deal with the to mental. To yeah, deal with for sure, everything for sure. that we have to deal with every yeah. day. Well, yeah, it's an hour a day. It's a matter of how you prioritize. Yeah. So I don't yeah. believe in we don't have time. I yeah. guess we're all busy persons. It's a matter of how do you prioritize your health and wellness mm. yeah. on an hour. How do you show them na um, this is worth your time? Mm-mm, mm-mm. So, well, all of us, like most of us say, we don't have time. Then pagdating sa bahay, we, we watch, watch TV, we watch, Netflix for hours. We binge watch yeah. ki- Korean novella <laughs> or yeah, something. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's like, yeah. I don't know, three hours, yeah. four yeah. hours. Yeah. What's like uh, one or time. two hours, yeah. diba? So yeah. how do you prioritize? Yeah. 
I remember how CrossFit actually was one of the most appealing programs for me because when I found out that it's just a one hour yeah, session and I get to go home, I was actually pretty happy about that because I used to go to the global gym and I'd spend hours there. It's yeah. parang sauna pa lang 30 minutes now. <laughs> yeah, eh, this diba? one hour parang, looking at yourself in the mirror. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, which we don't have in CrossFit <laughs> gyms, by the way. That's another fun fact, right? We don't believe in the, the mirror so that you're not like always just super self-aware. Um, you know what? It's actually funny that I just thought about it too. Na th- th- there's that concept of like yung, yung time, but there, there are other misconceptions that could be dealt with with regards to cross it. And one just now that we, I, may, I thought about this, injury is very correlated to cross it. And yeah. to the people who are a little bit more learned, they're like, ah, I don't want cross it because I'm injured. Yeah. What do you guys think about that? Um, well, for me, as a sport, you know, every sport has their own injuries, like basketball. Well, that's common. Even in CrossFit, naman, yeah. if you push yourself to the limit, yeah. you can get injured, yeah. accident, and everything. Yeah. As a like, as a fitness CrossFit, as a fitness methodology, if you're well guided by a coach yeah. or a CrossFit coach, um, your nutrition, your sleep, everything, recovery. Um, the injury is very, very, well, yeah. um, I don't know, very, very low percentage. Yeah. yeah. So that's what we've experienced in like personally. Yeah. 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 Actually, we go back to the technique first, years of practice, and then yeah. we, add, we be consistent with what we do, with the lifts that we do, yeah. and then intensity. Yeah. So as I guess as CrossFit coaches, that's our job talaga. Yeah. yeah. So may mga elite athletes tayo na papasok yeah. and they'd wanna lift too much. To, it's, it's up to us how we teach them to, yeah. hey, slow down. Let's go back to the basics. Yeah. Yeah. And I, then let's add from yeah. there on, let's move forward. I yeah. guess we have we're, we have our own fair share for injuries. Yeah. Siyempre, yung first year, um, we learned from our mistakes. Our mistakes. <laughs> yeah. Like personally and to our coaches doing this for like yes. several years now, we grow. And as we grow, we learn a lot of stuff. We get yeah. coached. We um, as coaches, yun nga, continuous learning. Um, as Coach Job said, CrossFit is an infant, pa. Yeah. Here. So infant along the years, we learn. Then what I've learned a lot about like injury when it comes to CrossFit also is that first and foremost, and this is something that I communicate in the camps that I run or th- when I work with coaches, is that injury when it comes to the athletes, it has to be recognized. Yeah. You do not go into competition, regardless of sport, CrossFit, basketball, swimming, triathlon. You don't go into a sport thinking that like, I am invincible. I'm mm-hmm. Superman. I'm never going to get injured. No. If you so much as put yourself in a position where you want to chase a medal, a podium, a race, a leaderboard, some scoring is involved, injury is part of it. And if you're not exposing yourself to the point of injury, are you really pushing hard enough? Mm-hmm. Or are you really, are you really training? Now, when it comes to the lifestyle aspect, though, the methodology aspect of it, though, the realization that I've had and the things that I've learned is that it's one of two things. It's either you weren't guided as to my first injury, I wasn't really being coached properly, or two, and I feel like this is the more common one, it really comes more from personal negligence. So they're dishonest about, like, did I get enough sleep? Did I eat enough? So on and did I get enough rest? Have I been doing my stretching and my mobility protocols that the coaches have been giving me? And I feel like that's where the injuries of the non-competitors come. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's being pinned to CrossFit. And that's yes. why it's a big misconception that we need to really work yes. on removing more because it is a deterrent for people, more people yeah. to do CrossFit. Yeah. yeah. So Coach Pao and Coach Ren, would you like to share with us some closing remarks when it comes to misconceptions and FAQs? Or rather, I guess the, my question here is, what word would you give to a person out there listening to come and try CrossFit and just kind of forget about the misconceptions or just mute it first? What, what advice would you give them? Well, first thing, I guess you have to try it for yourself mm. first. Yeah. Before, uh, normally we just see the videos of CrossFitters working out. Yeah. I guess for everyone out there, you should try it first. Yeah. And check out a community that's near you and, you know, just get to experience how it is to work out with a community, mm. with a trained coach. Yeah. And see for yourself. Yeah. 
Yeah, so yun nga. Um, you have to make them have a good experience first. Yeah, first and, experience. Yeah, first experience, make them have a good experience. Um, make sure they have fun. Mm. Um, number three is how we... What I always say is to our coaches, how we're going to put our shoes to their shoes, mm. yeah. to mm. the person's shoes, and understand them. So mm. as coaches, that's what we do. Um, how we understand a lot, how we sell ourselves to people, yeah. how we educate them and make them understand. Yeah. Usually, because going to CrossFit, there's a lot of uh, magnet nila, egotistic people din kasi yeah. it's challenging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. how do you you know discipline them or in a way um um it's yeah. not about that but yeah, it's, it's not about that. Yeah. It can be a lifestyle. Yeah. So yeah, that's good. So I guess um just to kind of sum up also what they've been saying is like with with regards to CrossFit, people we as human beings we're designed to move. Yeah. And one of the things that we do on a daily basis, we, we move forward. We, to get from point A to point B, from your bed to your bathroom to your car, you walk. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And eventually, you want to be able to run. You want to be able to run fast. But how do you run when you don't know how to walk? And how do you learn how to walk when all you're doing is standing? So when it comes to the CrossFit and all of these misconceptions preventing you from taking that first step, we need to learn how to take the first few steps to learn how to walk and then eventually we learn how to run. So if the running part is scaring you, understand first that you can't just be standing still to get to that point. Yep. And okay. you'll never know until you actually yes. try. Right. So thank you again, Coach Pao and Coach Ren. Thank you. This thank has you. been <laughs> episode two of the Nutrition Depot podcast talking about CrossFit in the Philippines, the episode with misconceptions and FAQs. We'll see you on the next one, guys.